Christ to bless you still, to marvel at your beauty and glory in your ways, and make a joyful duty our sacrifice of praise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Good morning and welcome to the Basilica of the Sacred Heart. Welcome to Notre Dame. For those who may be here for the very first time, welcome to your final prayer service as a law student at the University of Notre Dame, uh, if you're here for that first time. For those of you who are here for that first time and may have a lump in your throat about what goes before you. I want to talk about the man next to me. I'm delighted to be uh, presiding today with Father John Paul Kimes, who has been my friend since my sophomore year at Notre Dame in the midst of the 1990s, when former Dean Patty O'Hara was then former Vice President for Student Affairs and was chasing the two of us around as we were up to hijinks in student government. I'm not saying this because you care about my autobiography. But if you're sad to be leaving this place, consider that you may not be gone for long and that you will always be welcomed back with uh, warm hearts and warm smiles. We reflect this morning on your achievements and on your futures, on what God has brought you to and where God will send you to. And so we quiet ourselves to begin with a prayer. O oh God of wisdom, who call us to serve you in the tangle of our wits and give us, gift us with reason and the desire for communion. Send your spirit upon this joyful gathering. Help us to hear your word and to make it real as we seek to serve you in serving our neighbors. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the first reading. reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Let love be sincere. Hate what is evil. Hold on to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Anticipate one another in showing honor. Do not go, grow slack in zeal. Be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, endure in affliction, persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the Holy Ones, exercise hospitality. Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep. Have the same regard for one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not be wise in your own estimation. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be concerned for what is noble in the sight of all. If possible, on your part, live at peace with all. Owe nothing to anyone except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not kill, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and whatever other commandment there may be, are summed up in this saying, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no evil to the neighbor, hence 
Love is the fulfillment of the law. The word of the Lord. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord always. I shall say it again, rejoice. Your kindness should be known to all. The Lord is near. Have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, Think about these things. Keep on doing what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. Then the God of peace will be with you. The 
word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Three years ago, when you decided to come to Notre Dame Law School, you heard Dean Cole and many others tell you they wanted to provide you more than a legal education. They, we, your faculty, wanted to provide you a formation that would lead you all to be a different kind of lawyer. Three years later, you're probably tired of hearing that phrase. Rather than merely repeat that phrase ad nauseum, I want to talk to you about what I hope it means for you and what I hope your time at the law school has prepared you to do with the education you have received. The readings you students have chosen today speak of rejoicing, which you are certainly doing in these days as your time in school has come to an end. They speak of endurance and perseverance which you needed to arrive at this day. They speak of friendship and fraternity, of sharing each other's joys and tears, which you have done. More importantly, they speak of an attitude of life that I hope we, your faculty and staff, have instilled in you during these past three years. In the gospel you chose, Christ lays out a new vision of holiness, one we commonly call the Beatitudes. They push beyond the traditional concept of law and describe the attitude of the sons and daughters of God, made brothers and sisters in their common creation in his image and likeness, who come to experience his divine and merciful love in the gift of his son, Jesus Christ. The word most often found in the gospel today is clearly blessed. You're lawyers, we have to pay attention to words. Another word which is presented twice is the one I want you to focus on today. Dikaiosune, righteousness. Not the less accurate translation that so many of us have heard for years and as stewards of the law might be drawn toward those who hunger and thirst for justice. Dikaiosune is not justice, it is righteousness. But before we get to that Greek word, let's review a little Latin. The concept of justice is defined in the Old Testament by the lex talonis, the law of equal retribution, an eye for an eye. Taken from the Greek philosophers by the Roman jurists, the concept of justice is boiled down to two simple words, cuique suum, to each what he is owed. Justice begins with the individual, 
what each person has, what her rights are in society, what is his due. Justice blindly considers the isolated individual and what possible harm has been done, what that person is owed. While a necessary first step, justice alone is insufficient. It fails to take into account the complexity of our lives, the less than linear and often unequal relationships which characterize our fallen humanity. In today's gospel, Jesus does not speak about justice. He calls blessed those who hunger and thirst for something radical, righteousness. Righteousness as opposed to justice begins not with the isolated individual in his or her possessions or rights. It starts with relationships, our relationship to God and to others. Righteousness is not about what I have or what I am owed. It is about who I am. It is about who I am called to be. Righteousness, first and foremost, is about being in a right relationship with God, founded on his love, his mercy, the gift of his grace, which is a share in his divine life, all of which flows from the death and resurrection of his son. St. Paul, from whom you chose not one but two readings today, speaks often of our life in God's grace, of our right relationship with God, and he uses legal language to do so. The law, St. Paul tells us, in exacting justice, seeks to balance the scales. But nothing of this world can create a balance between the infinite love of God and my sin. So God himself offers the sacrifice which pays for my sins. It is his mercy shown in the cross of Christ that creates the balance necessary for me to live in righteousness. My righteousness then is not mine. It isn't what I am owed. It is what I have been given out of love, out of mercy. It is the opposite of what I am owed. To hunger and thirst for righteousness then is to hunger and thirst for the life that God calls me to, the life that he gives me, despite, in the words of St. Paul, my own death in sin. Because that righteousness is pure gift, St. Paul tells us not to be anxious. Those who live in righteousness are called to pray and give thanks to God. They are called to rejoice because in doing so they receive the gift of peace which comes from God, surpassing all understanding. In a world filled with anxiety, the hunger for righteousness will lead you to a peace that this world does not know. That peace, which is a gift from God, will lead you into the life described by St. Paul in today's second reading. If you hunger and thirst for righteousness, your zeal can never flag, but will continue to grow. As you give aid to those in need, as you exercise radical hospitality that is rooted in the inherent equality of all men and women is created in the image and likeness of God, your zeal will grow as you pray for those who disagree with you and persecute you because you hunger and thirst for something this world cannot give. Your zeal will grow as you weep for those whose inherent goodness is negated by this world. It will grow as you rejoice when the kingdom of God is built up, as you anticipate the needs of your brothers and sisters and provide for them. All of this, my dear friends, you are now called to do as lawyers, such that your practice of the law must be animated by the hunger and thirst for righteousness, your zeal for more than merely what each person deserves. Righteousness has been given to you in love. It has brought you into a right relationship with God, into a share of his divine life. And just as God is love, and you now share in his divine life through the gift of righteousness, your relationships with others must be defined by love. That love which St. Paul tells us is the fulfillment of the law. That love which does no evil. That love that returns no insult. 
that love that seeks not to glorify itself, but to care for the needs of others. This is the love that goes beyond what each deserves, beyond the blindness of justice, and looks at the world with compassion, seeing not what it is, but what it has been called to be. Your practice of the law, like your life, must flow from the gift of righteousness and be rooted in that love. If you hunger and thirst for righteousness, that righteousness which has been given to you as sons and daughters of God, adopted through the death and resurrection of his Son, you will be lawyers who never slack in zeal. You will be lawyers who are fervent in spirit. You will be lawyers who serve the Lord. You will not be merely a different kind of lawyer. You will be the best kind of lawyer. You will be one who sees the law not as a tool of retribution, but as an instrument for building up the kingdom of God. Let us now stand to present our prayers and petitions before the Lord. Que cada um de nós possa aumentar o seu compromisso de defender a dignidade de cada pessoa, incluindo os que não nascerão, que possamos fazer a nossa parte com a garantia de que todo se humano independente das capacidades, raça, religião, sexo, orientação sexual, ou nível socioeconômico, seja tratado com respeito e amor e que possamos trabalhar para um sistema jurídico que, que reflita es valores. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Kwa ajili ya wote waliochangia kwa namna mbalimbali ufadhili wa masomo yetu na mafanikio yetu katika kipindi chote tulichokuwa katika shule ya sheria ya Notre Dame kwa wakufunzi wetu marafiki familia na wafadhili wote waliotuhamasisha na kutusaidia kufikia hatua hii kubwa kwa ajili yao na kwa nia zao we pray to the lord lord hear our prayer Za Universitet Notre Dame, a zvlášť za vědělou práva, aby jeho studenti i absolventi čongli pošukivali pravdy i pracovali na spravedlivosti se vzpůjčujem i zrozuměním i vyplňajíc to místo v světě, aby jsme zavře byli vděční za profesorů, kteří nás kštautovali, za pracovníků v Universitetu, kteří nás vzpěrali, i za całą społeczność Uniwersytetu, która nas ubogacała w czasach naszych studiów. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our 
prayer. Pour les chefs d'État de notre monde, qu'ils grandissent en sagesse et apprennent à prendre soin des plus vulnérables dont ils ont la charge. Nous prions particulièrement pour les peuples de l'Ukraine et du Soudan, qu'en cette période de peur et de conflit, ils connaissent la présence et le reconfort de Dieu et que nos dirigeants mondiaux travaillent ensemble pour que la paix s'épanouisse. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Για όσου βρίσκονται σε στιγμέ μετάβαση, α κοιτάξουμε σε σένα στην περίπλανή μα, γνωρίζοντα ότι αυτού που καλεί, εσύ πρώτα προετοιμάζει και ενθαρρύνει. Βοήθησε μα να θυμηθούμε τα λόγια που είπε στον Ηρεμία. Μην φοβάσαι, γιατί είμαι μαζί σου. Δώσε μα ειρήνη για το ταξίδι που έχουμε. Μας. Φέρτε στη μνήμη μα προηγούμενε νίκε και βοήθησε μα να προχωρήσουμε με τη σιγουρία ότι είστε πίστη για ότι ολοκληρώσετε το έργο που έχετε ξεκινήσει σε καθένα μα. Προσευχόμαστε στον κύριο. We pray to the Lord. To overcome our fears, to face our burdens, to respond to the vulnerabilities of others with compassion, tolerance, humbleness, and respect. May we speak the language of love. May we act in the name of truth. May we overcome differences of culture and religion, coexist with friendship, civility, and hospitality. May we continue the conversation begun and fostered here at Notre Dame. We pray to the Lord. Lord Por el eterno descanso de todos los que han muerto, especialmente aquellos familiares, amigos y miembros de la comunidad de la Facultad de Derecho de Notre Dame, que, están, que estaban con nosotros cuando comenzamos este viaje. Recordamos de manera especial a John Rant, padre de nuestra compañera Jensen Rant y miembro de la clase del 95 así como todos nuestros seres queridos que han muerto durante nuestro tiempo en Notre Dame. Que ellos y todos nuestros queridos difuntos descansen en los brazos amorosos de Dios. We pray to the Lord. Lord And we conclude our prayers and petitions by joining together in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Before we conclude with a final blessing, I thought I'd take my chaplain's prerogative to give you my last piece of advice. 
and those who have endured and persevered through my preaching know that I like to do so with poetry. I notice on the final book page of our booklet, which seems like an inapt place to put such a thing, it tells us that this prayer service is a solemn and reverent occasion. Um, I don't think we should have too much solemnity on such a jubilant day. So if you don't mind, this is a slightly irreverent poem and a very brief point. It's about Ed. Ed was in love with a cocktail waitress, but Ed's family and his friends didn't approve, so he broke it off. He married a respectable woman who played the piano. She played well enough to have been a professional. Ed's wife left him. Years later, at a family gathering, Ed got drunk and made a fool of himself. He said, I should have married Doreen. Well, they said, why didn't you? As Father Kimes noted, we can have an up-and-down relationship with the phrase a different kind of lawyer in our time at Notre Dame Law School. I have come to peace with the phrase, not as an arrogant one that we do something better than the rest of the world, though I hope we aspire to, but as a mysterious one. We don't know what it means. You're going to show us. How are you going to show us? Because unlike Ed, when you are faced with a difficult choice about what kind of lawyer to be, and your heart tells you, based on your training and your experience here, and even indeed your time in prayer, something different from what the people around you do, you're going to have the courage to follow your heart and to show us, finally, what it means to be a different kind of lawyer. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May God, the source and origin of all blessing, grant you peace pour out his blessing in abundance, and keep you safe from harm as you go forth from here. Amen. May he give you integrity in the faith, endurance in hope, and perseverance in charity with holy patience to the end. Amen. Amen. May he order your days and your deeds in his peace, grant your prayers in this and in every place, and lead you happily to eternal life. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.
cultivate the nature God plants in every heart, revealing in our witness the master teacher's heart. Go make of all disciples, we welcome the